joins us live from The Hague via Skype. Thank you for joining us, sir. I want to ask you first about the police response. It's been described as uh, unprecedented uh, in the fact that they took out these three attackers uh, with 50, I think it was 50 bullets. Uh, would you say that that's, uh, that is unprecedented compared to previous attacks that we've seen in police responses? Well, I think it's only unprecedented in terms of the number of officers engaged. When we look at the actual number of rounds fired, uh, which uh, Assistant Commissioner Rowley has noted is around 50, um, that's actually not that high a number. If you think about uh, the type of situation they're in, the mix of firearms that these people had, which would be handguns combined with longer weapon submachine guns, uh, the actual number of rounds expended uh, on three different targets who are mobile is actually, when we look at other counter-terrorist operations in other theaters, not that high a number. I mean, what's surprising to me is the, the discipline of the use of firearms. It sounds like an awful lot of violence. It is an awful lot of violence. But in a situation in which three men are assumed to be having bomb vests, actually, when we compare it with other incidents, um, we're looking at, at one that doesn't stand out for, so to speak, frivolous or uncontrolled shooting, but rather a lot of discipline on the part of the officers involved. I, I want to ask you about the, the broader security apparatus in and around London as well. We heard from the Prime Minister Theresa May yesterday saying that enough is enough and that uh, something does need to change in terms of the approach. We're also learning that on London Bridge, just behind me, they are now erecting security barriers, but they weren't in place before. Do you think there has been a, faili a failing somewhere along the line in Britain's security apparatus? Not necessarily. I mean, we have to understand we're, we're facing an unprecedented uh, surge in attacks across Europe, uh, not just in the UK with these last three incidents. You're looking at a threat volume of potential actors here that runs into the thousands. And the variables or the uh, manner in which these attacks can take place know a very wide scope. So um, it's obvious that thinking needs to be done here. How can we secure the public domain better against certain types of attacks? Part of that is, is reactive. Um, what we just talked about, law enforcement officers, part of it will be medical, part of it will be communications, part of it will be able to do a quick shutdown of an area. But clearly we need to start thinking somewhat in the preventive mode here further. And definitely um, barriers uh, of different kinds might become a part of that mix at some of the most likely targets. And of course, bridges now on multiple occasions have proven to be vulnerable, so it's logical that we're going to see a rethink. But it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that we need to do very hard finger pointing now at what's transpired in the weeks prior. Yeah, it will be interesting, won't it, Glenn, to see how the public responds as well to an increased police presence on the streets. We saw after the Manchester attack that there was uh, the army presence on the streets as well. And, of course, as you say, if we do get these permanent security barriers up, that does seem to then inflict on or impress on our, our way of life, which is something that, that Londoners in particular have been so uh, strong to say that, that that will not happen. Glenn, show my uh, appreciations to you. Thank you for joining us on the programme. And we are covering this story in depth, of course.